Before we do this next part of the animation, I would strongly encourage you to save your file. The baking process takes a long time and can also cause your computer to crash, so you don't want to lose your work progress. So be sure to save and make sure you have at least 30 minutes to bake out this simulation. So be sure to save your file before you try this next part. Caching is one way in which we can make this animation semi-permanent. There's a way that we can make this animation permanent, but that means if we change any of the other animation, if we change the placement of this bowl, or if we change the placement or movement of this cereal box, we won't be able to re-simulate it again. I would advise you to do this, but I would advise you to save this as a separate file. What that means is, if you need to come back and re-render later, you could use this version that we're going to create now for that re-render, but if you need to come back and change the animation, you can still use the cached version. To show you how to do this, I'm going to disconnect that end cache. If I choose the end particles that were used to create this pour, and go to end cache and delete cache, it will delete the cache files that are driving this simulation. Now, instead of caching this animation, I'm going to convert each of these end particles into an object. Now, you'll notice that the original serial is the actual only piece of mesh for this serial. Everything else is contained in this particle group and each particle in that group is just replaced with this original serial. So what we're going to do is convert each of those instances into an actual piece of mesh. We'll do this using another tool we haven't really talked about very much. It's called MASH. Don't worry about MASH too much right now, but know that MASH is used for making procedural animations such as motion graphics. So if you ever see interesting animated logos or, or opening credit scenes for a TV show, a lot of times programs similar to MASH are used for that. What we're going to do instead, but the only thing we're really going to use it for in this case, is to convert our instancer into multiple objects. If I go to MASH, Utilities, Bake Instancer to Object, it's going to convert each of those particles into a separate object. Now you'll see I got this error, and that's because I had the end particle one selected, not the instancer. So I'll choose the instancer and then do that again. MASH, Utilities, Bake Instancer to Objects. And it's going to give me this toolbox. So I get the choice of baking a single frame of animation or baking the entire animation. I also get the options of which of these channels I actually need to bake. In this case, I don't really need anything on my rotate or scale, so I'll go ahead and uncheck those. And now if I click bake animation, watch what happens. Okay, so that took a long time on my computer. That took almost 30 minutes. So it's definitely important to remember to save before you do this. But what you'll see is I now have a new folder in my outliner called Instancer One Objects. And if I expand those out, you'll see that it created an object for each of the animated particles. That means now I can delete all of this end particle related elements and each of these particles have a keyframe on every frame of this animation. That means that these little pieces that fall out toward the bottom here, I could just select those and delete them. I'm going to look at frames 0 to the end. So we see occasionally a piece of serial falls out. I'll just delete it.
The other thing it means is once our serial settles down right about here, I could also grab all of these objects and delete all of the keyframes after frame 127. So hold shift, highlight all of these, right click, delete. Looks like I have one more right past this. So I'll ex extend this out to 250 and make sure I'm deleting that one as well. And so now the serial is going to stop moving because there's no keyframes left. Actually, I didn't have everything selected, did I? So, frame 127, highlight all of these, right click, delete. And now, after that frame, they'll stop moving. So, again, it's important to remember that if I change anything now on this animation, it's not going to function correctly. If I move the serial box at all during any of the serial pour, these are just objects with keyframes on them now. So, it's important to not save over any of your previous files with this. So, I will save this as a new file and usually I like to call this a different file name, baked serial, so I know. Now if we go back to our render cam, we'll be able to see our entire shot. It appears that the animation is pretty much over by around frame 170. So that's the frame range that I can render to get my full animation.